Hey everybody, welcome to Kego Lasso, a special one-on-one with Brett Johnson, the brand new owner of Ipswich Town, who also owns Phoenix Rising in the USL. We discuss his views and his objectives for the iconic English club as they look to climb up from League One. We discuss this and so much more. Brett Johnson, one-on-one, Kego Lasso begins right now. Joining us now on CBS Sports and Que Golazo is Brett Johnson, the new owner of Ipswich Town. Him, alongside fellow Americans Berkey Bakay and Mark Detmer, make the Three Lions Fund, which are part of Town's new ownership. They also own USL side Phoenix Rising FC, who have succeeded on and off the pitch, including a title in 2019. And Brett now looks to help one of the most iconic clubs in English football and help them return to the glory days of the past. Brett, how are you, my friend? I am well, Luis. Thank you for having me on your show. It's a real honor. Absolutely. And by the way, our producer, Shaw Brown from CBS Sports HQ is shaking with excitement right now. He's like a little boy. I can just feel it. I can feel it. So uh, he's very excited as well. All right. First question, Brett, is an obvious one and not a new one to you, I am sure. Why Ipswich Town? Obviously, you had kind of highlighted iconic, iconic franchise. Um, It's not that easy to find a franchise that's got the history pedigree gravitas that Ipswich has, Um, you know, checked all the boxes in terms of major trophies, Portman road, and then, you know, adding on top of it, truly a global family, like, you know, support um, on on a global basis. I've, I've been overwhelmed. I mean, I knew the supporter support was strong, but it's blown me away just truly how strong it is. And, and I think how keen they are to see the club in, in, I, I guess I would describe it as new hands. So we've been really embraced, and I want to thank everyone for that support. No, absolutely. Ipswich Town, uh, you know, I grew up in England. Uh, I've been to Ipswich uh, a bunch. I know Portman Road, one of the most historic stadiums in England. This is a historic club, Brett. Uh, UEFA Cup winners in 8081, played in all major European competitions, never lost at home in Europe, beating Real Madrid, AC Milan, Inter, Barcelona. But they are in League One right now, and times are different. What are you going to do, Brett, that's different, that's going to help this club return to the championship and eventually, hopefully, the Premier League? Yeah, uh, you know, I think we've got the right man in, in Paul Cook. I think that's a, a good start. Um, we're very pleased to have added Mark Ashton um, relative to his pedigree, background, experience, and certainly what he did at Bristol. And I think Mark's going to bring... Um, a great sort of difference in terms of his on, you know, a hands-on with the utmost respect to Marcus Evans. Um, You know, it's not a secret that he was fairly, you know, absentee owner. And, and, you know, I I really believe that these assets, you've got to live, eat, breathe this stuff 24 hours a day. And, uh, and, and it's a team effort. I, I, I feel very fortunate with the success that I've seen in Phoenix, you know, Phoenix Rising, the credit goes to a lot of other individuals that, you know, aren't on this podcast right right now. But uh, I think immediately, you know, having Paul Cook and his experience, adding Mark Ashton, and then really looking to kind of probably make some fairly dramatic wholesale changes over the summer window um, and just put a put a team that's going to fight every single day, you know, for the honor to kind of restore Ipswich back to its former glory. Yeah, no, absolutely. And by the way, if you're an Ipswich Town and you're lit fan and you're listening and you don't know anything about the USL Phoenix Rising, uh, you need to know that the support for that club is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And I think that part of it, Brad, is because you represented the city really well and at least uh, represented the fans and the people. I feel that there's a connection there with Ipswich. Ipswich is such a proud town, proud fans is the uh, commitment to the community just as important in order to get this team to grow? Uh, absolutely. You, I can't say it any better than you just said it. Um, you know, these teams, you know, ideally live and thrive because of the community support. Um, and that was critical. I, it got me through the supporters in Phoenix that were behind what I would describe as me in the early days, the predecessor days to Phoenix rising. It got me through some dark periods of time and I, and I'll never forget it. And I'm grateful to them because they're the ones that stick through it, you know, thick and thin. Um, And so, you know, by extension, I'm grateful to the global community of Ipswich supporters and I'm 
going to work along with the extended team tirelessly to reward them, you know, and get this club back to a point of pride for the broader community because that it's where it deserves to be. And it, but it just highlights just how challenging the sport is. You know, it's not for the faint of heart. And, you know, if these assets, they start to go through a tough patch, you know, it could be, it could be really difficult. And Ipswich has certainly gone through a tough patch. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, let's talk about, uh, you know, this summer. Do you feel like it's going to be a busy summer for you? A lot of players reaching the end of their contracts, others the end of their loan spells. Um, are you going to be heavily invested in, in, the, in the transfer window? For sure. Yeah, it's a quick answer. But, you know, again, uh, Mark, Mark and Paul will take the lead on on doing the heavy lift of it. And, you know, o- always welcome, you know, however, whatever value I can add and bear K. And, you know, it's one of the many things that we enjoy about Phoenix Rising and and credit to Rick Schantz and Bobby Dooley, who kind of day to day run run that franchise for us. We're always happy to be, you know, in the mix on that stuff. But I have great faith and confidence that they're going to sign some fantastic, you know, game changers, if you will on the pitch and start to change the trajectory for us. But, you know, in some respects, based on the current run of form, I, I, I don't want to say anything's easy, but you know, we, it's very clear. We're going to have to make some changes. It's uh, the, the club's got to start to, to turn around relative to, you know, what's going on on the pitch. Right. Because it's also about, you know, forget the Premier League for a second. It's about getting a playoff spot in the league one and then going to the championship, et cetera. So step by step, I have to ask you, Brett, obviously, because of the times you're entering the European football market at a time when American ownership is being questioned a little bit, not everywhere. My own Aston Villa was essentially saved because of American ownership, uh, West Edens, et cetera. But with all this Super League chatter, uh, are you worried uh, worry about the, how the community will receive you? Are you paying attention to the city, its fans? Uh, I'm sure you are, but even more so now, do you think? Yeah, I mean, obviously, given what happened with this debacle with Super League, I mean, I, Bear Kay and I were very quick to be on the right side of that <laughs> debate. But, you know, it's easy for us. We're, we weren't invited to be part of the Super League. Right. But, you know, the reality is I, I it's not a bold statement to say I, I collectively they were clearly tone deaf. And I think rightly so. Uh, the response, um, you know, was appropriate. I, I'm glad it died a quick and painful death. Um And, and I think some of the American owners deserve a lot of criticism relative to their role or, or naivete associated with that. I mean, one, one of the many things I love about now owning a club in England, I've owned a club through uh, my partnership with Jordan Gardner in, in Denmark with Helsinger. Yep, we know Jordan, uh, a very good yeah. friend of the show. Yep. Yeah, I, I love Jordan, uh, you know, and, and really respect the job that he's done. Um, but I, I'm a huge advocate of promotion and relegation. I, I, I believe strongly in that model. I wish we had it in the States. Um, so I, I don't know if you could say, you know, you can't kind of make a broad brush sort of indictment of American owners because the reality is we all come at it from different places, different balance sheets, you know, certainly different leagues, et cetera. I, and I also view this partnership as very much an Anglo-American partnership uh, yeah. relative to Ipswich. Um, but all, all that being said, we, we take our role and stewards in the game with absolute reverence and, and humility and, uh, and look forward to hopefully making good things happen. Yeah. Uh, Jordan, you mentioned Jordan Gardner. He actually was part of the show as well uh, earlier this year. I asked him this question. I'll ask it to you as well. Plenty of good clubs, not even just in the Premier League, just, you know, plenty of good clubs that are well run, uh, you know, by non Uh, British owners uh, or British, it doesn't matter. Who are clubs that you admire, uh, the way that they're run, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, we talked briefly, you know, before the show started about Andrea and Leeds. Um, been very impressed. You can't, you can't fail but be impressed with what they've done. Um, I'm impressed by Barnsley, um, you know, yeah. with, with, with what uh, Chen Lee's done there. Um, you know, and I think I, I, not not in England, but I'm I'm very impressed with what Jor Jordan's done in in Denmark and. Uh, You know, that club, it's a perfect example of what I describe as kind of punching above its weight class. You know, it's I, I think anyone who thinks that the panacea for what ills any club is cash is missing the point. It's about culture and it's about, you know, finding talent, getting them to come in and buy into a, a, a an approach and starting to put, you know, three points consistently, you know, on the scoreboard, making good things happen. All that being said. You know, you can have a big payroll, you can get great players, and you could still have an absolute train wreck. You know, it it almost takes as much money and time to have a bad team as it does to take a good team. So 
at some point, leadership and culture has got to matter and, and does matter. And you see that kind of come through. And I think it's come through with Phoenix Rising. I think that's partly why we've been successful. Yeah, no, uh, 100%. Phoenix Rising, by the way, uh, how about you get Didier Drogba out of retirement and get him to play for like, you know, yeah, 15 minutes as a sub, I think you could do it. I, I love that idea. I love it. I, I, I You were not going to find um, many people who are a bigger fan of Didier than I am. And, you know, I, I remember, uh, you know, rewinding the clock when Bear K told me, you know, we had just kind of, he just invested in Phoenix Rising, you know, or, and he said, you know, I'm going to get Didier Drogba. And I remember shaking my head and being like, you're crazy. So no and, and I literally, it was a great story. Didier flies over and we're kind of giving him the full tour uh, of, and at this point, we don't even have a stadium. Literally, we're in the middle of, <laughs> what are you of a, a just a, a an empty lot. Of- like this was something right out of Hollywood. A tumbleweed, but literally a tumbleweed <laughs> comes comes blowing through this field, and I I'm standing next to Didier, and I see him go and look at his watch, and it literally was like Didier being like, "I wonder if I can catch an earlier flight out of here." <laughs> like he's like, like, "Hold on, we have more Didier." I promise. <laughs> I like, no, and Ber- Berkey's like, "We're gonna put this stadium here," and and and. You know, Bear K, I, I, by the way, you want to talk about a future guest, I highly recommend you get Bear K. I, he absolute legend. I feel, you know, blessed to be partners with him. But he he had the vision and he brought Didier to Phoenix and he made it happen. And Didier came back, I think it was like 30 days later, and we built this stadium. And and all of a sudden, Didier is like, wait a second, you know, these guys, these guys are the real deal. But Didier truly helped put us on the map, um, and he's just such a such a class act on and off the pitch, and an unbelievable ambassador for the sport. And you, you're not going to find someone who's going to have more platitudes for for the man than I than you will with me. No, absolutely, a legend of the game. So yeah, so we'll get we'll get Didier on the field. Uh, yeah, 15 you know, minutes. Uh, I feel like you but, could do it. Like, hey, by like, the way, I you know coming off you know 75th minute, you know the guy would have to. <laughs> you'd have to put a couple people on to make sure to, you know, I tell you one thing, I tell you one thing, if there isn't an Ivory coast community in Ipswich, there will be uh, very soon. If that happens as well, uh, that will yeah. be absolutely incredible. By the way, Brett, uh, obviously, uh, you know, commuting back and forth U S and UK, how, how, how are you planning to do that? Uh, maybe not this season, but uh, as we get closer to the off season. Yeah. My, my eyes are focused on, you know, the August, whenever we kind of put the calendar, uh, the home opener in the calendar, I'm really going to kind of key off that date. I think my partners and I will, will plan to make a true trip of it, really spend time, you know, with the community, with all the supporters. And, you know, it, it, it's a shame, you know, the world's not properly spinning back on its axis yet for a lot of reasons, but we, we can't wait to get over there. Um, but hopefully everything will cooperate for us getting over. And I've already been talking to my wife and kids about, uh, about making a trip over to London. And I was joking. I just tell my daughter, we got to try to stop at Hogwarts and she should, <laughs> she should be all, she should be all in. <laughs> You'll make it happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, how do you watch matches by the way? Do you have a special, uh, does the, uh, are the folks over there at Ipswich uh, digital folks helping you out with that? Yeah. Yeah. They immediately got me access to the, I follow account which is which has been been great to in terms of access it's been a little painful because the the you know the performance is not where anyone wants it to be right now but but no it's it's been fantastic but i i can't wait till portman road is just truly rocking and and again been really encouraged by the outreach from longtime supporters who've started who had started to kind of you know obviously lose some faith and you know, reaching out and just being adamant about how keen they are to renew their their season tickets, or they had let them lapse, you know, get them again. And um, and and I really look forward to trying to engage with the younger fans, um, you know, the ones that you know don't have the history of seeing what this club is all about, um, and and trying to figure out how to, you know, a big part of the support that we have in Phoenix is you know from younger fans, and I I love bringing someone I constantly give tickets away in the Phoenix market to anyone who who's interested in and without a it's 100% conversion. I love introducing someone to, you know, the beautiful game if you will. And and welcome doing that in um in Ipswich. We've already kind of committed that every single game we're going to donate all of our tickets. Every single owner is going to own a block of tickets that we pay for. I mean, I, this is not like things that are given to us. I always feel adamant about owners, you know, not getting things for free. You got to you got to pay your share. Um, but really kind of finding ways to kind of give them to different schools and other young kids to make sure that they, we keep expanding the the brand one, one person at a time. That's great. That's great. And that's part of the community conversation that we were having 
earlier, of course. Uh, Brett, it's been an absolute pleasure. My final question to you is, uh, you know, let's pretend, well, I mean, we do have an Ipswich lifelong fan uh, listening in our producer, but let's pretend that the entire, I mean, because they will, they'll be watching this. Uh, what's your overall message? Uh, what can they look forward to uh, under your leadership? Yeah, I, I appreciate them keeping the faith, you know, because they've had to during some dark days. And, and you know, I would have to say is right now, I think the future is phenomenally bright. I, I'm grateful. We work very hard. We coveted Ipswich. We really sought it out. Um, you know, and there's a lot of roads that led us to Ipswich, you know, not the least of which was my relationship with Frank Yollop. And the credit I give Frank Yollop for coming into Arizona United and really helping to start to change the trajectory of that franchise under my ownership. Um, but we, we really wanted to, and I, I would say up until a couple of weeks ago when it closed, I wasn't sure it was going to close. Like I, I remember not wanting to get too attached to this because for whatever reason, if it didn't close, it's just painful. Yeah. Uh, but now that it has, we are all in on it. I mean, to the point where, as I said, I just, I just dropped $400 on the store to gear up. <laughs> but, uh, but all, all that being said, I'm to, waiting to for the, your tattoo, Brad. Oh, yeah, I, by the way, as we said, as I said, premier league, premier league, Ipswich premier right. league, uh, that that is a tattoo that uh, you heard uh, it here first, Brett Johnson. Yeah, by the way, you did break it. You did break it. I have to try to figure out how to break it to my wife. I, I welcome the day I've got to turn to my wife and explain that I on your show I had made that commitment. But well, look, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be on your show. And I'm as I said, I'm beyond grateful now to have this opportunity with Ipswich, and we are gonna work tirelessly to get it up to the Premier League. And uh, and we will not stop until you know. And so I've got a tattoo that says so, says so. <laughs> and I get to choose where do you put that tattoo? In. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. I, I, that, 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 that we might have to debate, but, it, but uh, like I said, that would be one tattoo. You'd have no, no debate from me, you know, in terms of inking it, if you will. Well, excellent. Well, it's already recorded and it's already blueprinted. So we'll, we'll take it's that. Out, but, it's but, out there. Brett Johnson, uh, Phoenix Rising, but most importantly, for the sake of this interview, Ipswich Town, uh, some brighter days are ahead for the iconic English club. Brett, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, Luis, I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you so much for your support of USL, which is a league that I care so much about and so grateful to. And now, you know, obviously by extension, the opportunity to talk to you about Ipswich and beyond. So thank you for everything you're doing for the sport. I'm really grateful. <laughs> Hey, everybody. I want to thank Brett Johnson for joining me today. Don't forget to follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. Of course, if you're watching this, you know that we're on YouTube, cbssports.com, and so much more. Stay with us. We have so much more to come every weekday. Have a great, great day. Hey.